Is Saudi Arabia's economy collapsing? Saudi Arabia, like many countries, is ruled by short-term thinking. But the House of Saud is making its mistakes in a part of the world where the phrase, heads will roll, has retained its literal meaning. Welcome to the Atlantis Report. The Saudi economy is transitioning away from petroleum-based industries through reforms and diversification due to sustained lower oil prices and unsustainable budget deficits. The economy is not in collapse, but there are many changes taking place, and some have been more challenging than others. External consultants, including McKinsey and Palladium, are strategically assisting KSA leadership through this developmental process under the Vision 2030 plan. The short-term, commercialist thinking of Saudi Arabia's leaders is doing them in. Here is a rundown of Saudi Arabia's current economic situation, the per capita GDP is $21,096, highest of all the mostly Muslim countries, though it is slightly down from last year. Petroleum accounts for 90% of exports. Although the oil will not run out anytime soon, the shale revolution has allowed other countries to become less dependent on Arab oil, and Saudi Arabia is now third among oil producers, after the United States and Russia. Saudi Arabia's leaders have been talking about the need for diversity for a long time, but no change is forthcoming. Income inequality is very high, and the youth unemployment rate is 25%. Saudi Arabia closed out 2017 with government debt at 17% of GDP, up from 2% three years earlier. At its core, Saudi Arabia's economic system consists of a wealthy elite pursuing highly profitable, albeit short-term economic successes, while a large class of forgotten, obsolete peasants grows increasingly dissatisfied with the whole operation. Ever since the first oil was found, back in 1921 by British geologists, it has put a full 50% of its entire oil revenue into the Saudi Development Fund. This is now the largest fund in the world. Saudi Arabia's economy is an oil-based economy and heavily dependent on oil exports. Despite spending billions of dollars to diversify the economy, no meaningful results have been achieved, and there is virtually no other industry apart from the petroleum industry. Oil accounts for 90% of its export earnings and 90% of revenue for the budget. Riding on the high crude oil prices from 2000 to 2013, the Saudi foreign reserves swelled from a few billion in 2000 to a peak of $740 billion in 2013. Basically, the whole economy and the existence of the Saudi regime are dependent on oil. If oil was not discovered in Saudi Arabia, the only thing Saudi Arabia would be exporting in 2019 would be dates, camels, and maybe sand. Politics and Society Saudi Arabia is a medieval-style Wahhabi monarchy that has repressive laws and restricts basic laws of freedom. The courts function in accordance with Islamic law called Sharia. Social spending is the glue that holds the regime together. The Saudi monarchs have been throwing money around for decades to quieten any dissent and maintain power. Citizens pay no tax on income. Subsidized petrol costs about 10 cents a liter. Electricity is given away for two cents a kilowatt hour. There are generous social welfare schemes which include everything from free healthcare to a free burial and everything in between. The biggest supporter of the so-called Arab Spring was worried about the revolution reaching its borders, spending on patronage exploded after the Arab Spring as the monarchy tried to smother any dissent within its kingdom. Bonuses to state employees increased pensions, higher unemployment benefits, or simply big handouts were given to distract the public attention from the uprisings in the Arab world. All this was possible and affordable because oil was selling at $140 per barrel. Shale Oil Industry With significant recent advances in technology for shale oil extraction, the production of shale oil saw a steady increase from 2011 onwards. The high oil prices worked in favor of shale oil producers as many projects which were not feasible earlier were able to generate profit because of the booming oil prices. The shale oil industry started producing oil in record amounts. Even though these numbers were not huge if compared to OPEC oil production, they were enough to influence the global oil market. Global oil prices fell slightly due to the shale oil industry. So what was Saudi Arabia's reaction to shale oil? Saudi Arabia, which has built its welfare state around the assumption that oil prices go only one way, that is up, started feeling the pinch of falling oil prices. In late 2014, Saudi Arabia discovered that supply has a direct effect on price. 
They came up with a brilliant plan, they decided to increase oil production. Saudi Arabia believed that the oversupply would reduce oil prices to a level where the shale oil industry would go broke and wouldn't be able to continue with production, thus making Saudi Arabia the undisputed king of the global oil market. Even though a large number of shale oil producers were US-based, Saudi Arabia had the blessing of the USA because the strategy would supposedly hurt Russia also. The plan was put into action, and Saudi Arabia was saying, what could possibly go wrong? Effects on global oil market. Saudi Arabia was, indeed, right. The increased oil production by Saudi Arabia started affecting crude oil prices. Saudi Arabia was hoping a manageable decrease in price would put the high-cost shale oil industry out of business. In the past, whenever crude oil prices dropped, they bumped back to previous prices quite quickly, so it seemed as if Saudi Arabia would kill off the competitors, and oil prices would rise again. In the worst-case scenario, Saudi oil wells are the cheapest to run, so there is no way anyone could beat them at their game. Saudi Arabia had played its cards right. Many shale oil wells had to shut down, the Russian economy was hurt by falling oil prices, and countries like Algeria and Venezuela were crying in pain while the Saudis were laughing. The prices dropped to $80 a barrel, which prompted a meeting of OPEC countries, which are responsible for 40% of world production. Countries like Iran and Venezuela wanted Saudi Arabia to cut back production to stabilize oil prices, which were in free fall. But Saudi Arabia was not in a relenting mood. Saudi Arabia's dream turns into nightmare. Though the Saudi strategy seemed perfect on paper, it was deeply flawed. Saudi Arabia ended up hurting no one but itself. Shale oil extraction costs more than an oil rig, but with advances in extraction technology, it's not considered high-cost drilling anymore. To give you an idea, a shale oil well in Texas costs less than digging in the Gulf of Mexico or the Arctic. So even though some shale oil wells had to shut down, the high-yield wells were still profitable, and shale oil production hit a record high. Russia is among the largest exporters of oil and gas, but it's not entirely dependent on these exports. Gold, diamonds, precious metals, iron, wheat, etc. are among the other Russian exports. Russia has a sophisticated defense industry worth billions of dollars. It also has well-developed fishing and timber industry along with expertise in manufacturing, aerospace and aviation, construction, etc. Saudi Arabia lacks any such knowledge or capacity and is mainly dependent on foreign technicians for even running their petrochemical industry. There has also been a general decline in the demand for oil, so there are several other factors affecting the oil industry. Saudi assumptions that China will continue to increase its demand for energy and Iran will continue to suffer under sanctions also proved to be false. Saudi Arabia not only failed miserably, but it also ended up hurting its own economy more than anyone else's. Current oil market. Saudi Arabia might have started this price war, but it's like a helpless beached whale now, it has lost control over the market price. There is no easy way out for the Saudis who have gambled without much thought. One option for Saudi Arabia will be to cut down its oil production and hope that the price will rise. The prices will eventually grow to their previous levels, but the shale oil producers will also return in record numbers. This will also result in other countries grabbing their market share. Sanctions on Iran have also been eased, and Iran will add another million barrels to the oil market. The Iranians would love to hurt the Saudis even further by supplying more oil. The other option is to be patient and see what happens. The patience game is a costly affair. Saudi Arabia might run out of money well before it runs about patience. So things are not looking good for Saudi Arabia. Will Saudi Arabia go bankrupt? I don't think Saudi Arabia will go bankrupt. At least, not just yet. Remember the $740 billion foreign reserves? They are very handy, but they have been shrinking at an unprecedented pace. A whopping $70 billion are already gone in less than a year. The costly Saudi welfare state is built around petrodollars. The Saudis need oil prices to be at $110 per barrel to balance their budget. At the moment, the Saudis need $5 minus $10 billion a month to fill in the gap. If Saudi Arabia keeps taking out the money from foreign reserves, by 2020, it will be empty. The other option will be to borrow money. Borrowing money saves them from dipping into foreign reserves, but it doesn't change the fact the government has no means to make up for the huge budget deficit. 
Saudi Arabia's foreign reserves might be significant, but so is its population. If you calculate per capita foreign reserves, they are more comparable to Jordan or Thailand. Saudi Arabia's economic growth over the past decades has been fueled by petrodollars. If the petrodollars are gone, it's quite likely the economy will also stagnate. Saudi Arabia is also involved in a costly war against Houthis in Yemen and heavily involved in funding and supplying weapons to Islamists in Syria. Saudi Arabia's entire military buildup is dependent on foreign imports, and defense accounts for 11% of the annual budget. If oil prices rebound before Saudi Arabia runs out of cash, the House of Saud will breathe a sigh of relief. If Saudi Arabia runs out of money, then the monarchy has other things to worry about than bankruptcy, like saving the regime because the Arab Spring may finally arrive in the kingdom. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.